I'm Dr. John Cruz, and today I'm going to be talking about lion's mane mushrooms. Are they really good for your brain? So as usual, I'll start with the take-home message and summarize things in a minute or two, and then jump into the main talk. So the take-home message is that lion's mane is being widely and wildly promoted for brain health, suggests it can be used to treat depression, anxiety, dementia, ADHD, loss of focus and attention. There is a good deal of basic science and lab animal data to support that it can have beneficial effects on the brain, reduce neuroinflammation, be neuroprotective, has some antibiotic, antioxidant qualities, so it promotes mitochondrial health. But the randomly controlled trials in humans amount to only five studies, barely 100 subjects, a little over 100 in two studies on depression and barely 100 subjects split across three different studies on dementia and cognition. And the human data is extremely weak and unconvincing. And if that was all we had, no one would be taking lion's mane. We have certainly not disproved that it works. Again, there's a wealth of basic science that it can be beneficial, but we do need more good quality human studies. We're talking here about the lion's mane mushroom. It's a white shaggy mushroom. Ericium arenaceus, which means hedgehoggy hedgehog. So it's other name, that's Latin name. Its other names are bearded tooth mushroom or bearded hedgehog mushroom. It's found across much of Eastern Asia, large parts of North America, parts of Northern Europe. And there's at least in Japanese cultural traditions, several centuries, if not a few thousand years of monks taking this mushroom to help their focus during long meditative sessions. In the last 30 years, this is also a substance that is being cultivated. So the source of it is not just the wild mushrooms. So this is a mushroom that tends to grow on dead and dying trees. So it's usually not on the forest floor, but up in the trees. And usually the fruiting body grows in the fall or early winter, depending on humidity and temperature and other local conditions can be cultured on dead logs or on synthetic man-made logs or in solutions. And what we tend to focus on as humans is what's called the fruiting body, the toadstool-like part. Again, this doesn't look much like a toadstool. It looks like a fuzzy ball, hence a hedgehog name or the lion's mane name. But underground or embedded in the wood is a intricate network of fibrous, white, twisty material called the mycelium, made of hyphae or the individual particles or pieces. And that's, in lion's mane, the mycelium can last 30, 40 years. The fruiting body, the part we think of as mushrooms, tends to be lasting only days, weeks, or maybe a few months. If we're talking about lion's mane, are we talking about eating fresh lion's mane? Are we talking about eating dried lion's mane? and powdering it and including it in some mixture? Are we using extracts? And the extracts can be water-based extracts, alcohol-based extracts, with or without heat and either of those solvents. There can be procedures for extracting specific molecules. There can be more general whole-purpose extracts. So comparing studies, we don't yet have a standardized system for determining what is a standardized lion's main extract. Anyway, there have been studies finding more than 100 different potentially psychoactive compounds in lion's mane. Now, in general, in addition, I'll get the psychoactive ones in a moment. There is protein in it that contain carbohydrates and contain fatty acids. They also contain trace metals like magnesium, zinc, copper, which are essential for the body to function properly, mostly as cofactors and enzymes. Lion's mane also contains several proto-vitamins that are, can be readily built into vitamins. Health benefits have focused on two classes of molecules. One are large polysaccharides, so those are long branch trigger molecules, long chains, and specific polysaccharides that are found in lion's mane have been demonstrated again in the lab to boost immune function. And much of the rest of the research is focused on a group of smaller molecules. These are called arinosines and arisinones, both actually come from the word for hedgehog again. Arinocenes, at least 
lactose consensus are small enough to cross the blood-brain barrier. These are also usually not broken down extensively by digestion. There seems to be some controversy of whether the hercinones themselves, all of them, cross blood-brain barrier or not. There's at least 19 or 20 specific arenosines identified and at least a dozen hercinones. So there's this is a class of molecules. And in general, these molecules, once they get in the brain, are regulating cytokines, so parts of chemicals of the immune system. They're affecting protein kinases. They affect transcription factors. And I would say there's good evidence for a variety of functions within the brain. So one is lion mane extracts are antioxidative, so they're reducing oxidative damage from too many electrons bouncing around. They have also been shown to help mitochondrial function in other ways. These can help lower blood sugar and lower blood lipids. Lowering lipids can be helpful for heart health. The glucose lowering has been shown to have some anti-diabetic effect from these mushrooms, at least in the laboratory bench. They have some anti-cancer ability fighting certain tumor cells. These smaller molecules, arenosines and hericinones, themselves have some anti-inflammatory properties. They also have antibiotic properties, being toxic to certain forms of bacteria, certain other fungi. They seem to promote gut health and stimulate the kappa opioid receptors. And maybe most significantly, or much of the interest, is they actually stimulate the synthesis of nerve growth factor, a chemical made in the brain that promotes the health and growth of nerve cells and is an essential component to keeping nerve cells alive and healthy for a long time. Extracts from lion's mane mushrooms help reduce beta amyloid deposition. That's an important component of the dementia process. Substances in lion's mane can hasten neural repair. Even at a functional level, improvements in memory and attention in rodents, different studies have used different extracts or different formulations. And I should point out that just looking at wild, fresh lion's mane mushrooms, depending on which arisenone or other component you're looking at, within, you know, per gram of wild mushroom, some of these factors have been found to vary by at least tenfold and maybe close to a hundredfold difference. So again, until we have more standardized systems, you may not know what you're actually getting or if you're getting the good stuff in your batch. And again, it may not be just one single component that's important. It may be that they work best synergistically with a combination. Basic science is, looks really encouraging. What do we know from the human studies? I'm not going to be talking about case reports. I'm talking about five different randomly controlled, so that's the gold standard for, for science here, studies, two of them on mood, two of them on deteriorated cognition, one on healthy people's cognition. There was a 2010 study done in Japan by Nagano and colleagues. It looked at 30 women and they were treated with four weeks of cookies containing lion's mane extract. And there was measurable reduction in depression and anxiety compared to the controlled group. Again, that's a pretty small study, pretty short duration, but statistically significant. Vigna and colleagues in 2019 published a study on Italian subjects. Now, they were looking at subjects who, to begin with, all of their subjects were overweight. It was a largely skewed towards women population, 62 and 77. The average age was 53. But in addition to being overweight, each subject had to have either a mood disorder, a sleep disorder, or a binge eating disorder. And it was actually about equally divided among those three categories. So the treatment consisted of everyone went on a low calorie diet. And then after a few weeks, they were treated again in a randomly controlled way with either placebo or eight weeks of lion's mane while they continued on a low calorie diet. And in this study, there was statistically significant improvement in depression, anxiety, and sleep associated with the lion's mane. There was a decrease in binge eating disorder, but that was actually more closely associated with just starting a low calorie diet rather than any added benefit from lion's mane. And they also looked at both pro 
brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, and BDN itself. And in the lion's mane group, there was an increase in brain-derived neurotrophic factor, something that is seen to be decreased often in people who are overweight and also decreased in depression states. But curiously, BDNF itself was not elevated, at least in the study. So jumping over the cognition in dementia studies, the first one was a study by Mori and colleagues in 2008 in Japan, 30 subjects, all of whom had mild cognitive impairment, the earliest clinical stages of dementia. They were taking 16 weeks of an oral extract of lion's mane or pills, and then were also monitored for an additional four weeks off the lion's mane. And looking at eight weeks, 12 weeks, and 16 weeks into treatment, those taking the lion's mane showed an improvement in some cognitive factors. What's strange, though, is that the placebo group, and some of it could just be repeated testing, also showed some improvement over the 16 weeks of the study. Now, at each point in time, lion's mane group was doing better than the placebo group four weeks after treatment stopped. And the lion's mane group dropped significantly, but its values in that group were still above those for the placebo. So again, placebo showed very mild increase over the quarter, quarter of a year, a little more than that, three, four months, whereas the lion's group improved more substantially, but then dropped, but was still doing better than the placebo group at the end of 20 weeks. A study in Taiwan in 2020 by Li looked at 41 subjects with mild Alzheimer's disease. There was a three-week introduction to this trial, and then they had 49 weeks, again, either placebo or lion's mane. And they used four different cognitive tests. These were general tests like the MM, many month mental state exam. At least on three of their four tests, there was some signs of cognitive deterioration in the placebo group, which is what you would actually expect with a mild cognitive impairment group. Some improvement over that same time in the lion's mane treatment group, but at most time points for most of those three tests, Nothing was statistically significant. There were one or two differences at the end, all again showing the lion's mane group doing better. And again, the trends looked very clear and linear that the lion's mane group was doing better, but not robust statistically significant changes. They did some MRI studies, and there was some fiber tract deterioration that was evident in the placebo group, but not the lion's mane group. That's a pretty weak finding after a year of treatment. And that's not saying it's not having an effect. It's just saying that tests weren't sensitive enough or the group wasn't large enough to show robust changes. Although, again, both of these, all of these studies are widely touted as showing big, wonderful effects of treatment. You couldn't call them that. And if these were supporting a drug, this drug would not be approved for either of these conditions based on this. And then there's a fifth study done by Satsu in Japan in 2019. These were people who were cognitively normal, an average age of 61. They were again randomly distributed into a placebo group or lion's mane group. They took lion's mane for 12 weeks. Again, there was only a total of 31 people. And there were some improvement in the mini mental state exam during the course of those 12 weeks in the lion's mane group that was not evident in the placebo group. That was statistically significant. But on two other tests, one was a visual retention test, one was a verbal paired association test, there was no difference between the groups. So again, although that's widely claimed to show substantial or significant improvement in cognition from lion's mane, that's a really weak set of findings. Studies looked at toxicity. So subjects in these studies, there have been a few who didn't continue because of mild gastrointestinal discomfort. That is not a common finding. Studies looking at bigger doses haven't found liver toxicity or kidney. These are definitely not poisonous mushrooms. There has been some concern raised that depending on where the mushrooms are growing, and this could apply to either wild or cultivated, that Heavy metals such as arsenic, lead, and cadmium, mushrooms are good at concentrating, building up these toxins. So no 
specific reports or incidents have been reported yet for people who have made sick from heavy metal poisoning. But if you're taking this every day, then it would be good if you can verify that this is a clean A source as you're taking. So my take on it is that, again, the laboratory basic science research looks moderately strong and highly encouraging. And the human data so far is pretty darn weak. Again, this may well help with cognitive processes, whether or not that helps executive functions associated with ADHD. There's no direct studies I'm aware of. There's certainly claims online on Reddit and other places of individuals who have been helped. Again, none of what I'm saying disproves that, but this is not yet ready for mass recommendations to the general public. 